Hello guys, hope you are doing fine. We're here to talk about Project Sunrise. Project Sunrise is a project by Qantas Airlines to fly from the east coast of Australia, from Sydney to New York, to London and maybe to Paris by the year 2023. So this is the, the official that I got this from Qantas website, uh, talking about Project Sunrise. Uh, we see Hawaii being right here and this plane flying north of Hawaii. Now this is important for the planning for the coming images that we will talk about and discuss. Now let's watch a couple of videos talking about Project Sunrise and we will get back and let's discuss this flight and how this is a, a proof that the Earth is flat and we don't live on a globe. Now, Qantas is set to launch the world's longest non-stop commercial flight this weekend. A group of 40 passengers and crew will board a Qantas Boeing Dreamliner in New York as they embark on a grueling 19-hour journey to Sydney. Thanks for making the time as you're about to hop on the plane, serving you well, more I've than 19 hours. I've flown all the way to New York just to fly back to Sydney, <laughs> you know, so it's a big trip just for that flight. The only two continents in the world that don't have a direct service. So I don't really understand why Alan Joyce said the only two continents in the world that don't have a direct flight. What happened to flights from Sydney to LA? How about the flights from Sydney to Houston and from Sydney to Dallas? So does he think New York City is a continent? Why did he say this? The only two continents in the world that don't have a direct service routes in the world. So and today, the flying kangaroo did Australia proud, hopping into the record books with the world's longest the flight. So we need to show that this can be done safely. It can be done uh, with with the rest that we have for the crews. And we believe that this data, this information, will help us get there. And footprint. Qantas hasn't given any specifics, but said that all carbon emissions from the flight will be offset. So just before the flight last uh, year, uh, Qantas released on Twitter the flight plan for this flight. Okay, and here it is, tweet, uh, Qantas Twitter account. Here's the QF7879 flight plan from New York to Sydney, follow along with flight radar 24 for live update. All right, so this is the flight plan and we're gonna be looking at this flight plan right here. Here I have Qantas flight plan superimposed on the Mercator map. And I want you guys to pay attention to this circle here, really, really important for what we have to say today. So let's zoom in this image a little bit. So this is Qantas flight plan, uh, they released the day before the flight. Uh, New York City flying out this way here, north to northwest of the U.S. Uh, above Oregon and then down to uh, towards Australia, flying north of Hawaii. So this is really important. I uh, do ask you to go back and watch the video uh, that I've made about 10 months ago. Flights from Australia to North America fly north of Hawaii, very important video, please watch that video. But let's look here a little bit more. As we change the opacity here, we will see Hawaii right there. Okay, bring it back to the opacity, you see that the flight path is north of Hawaii. Really important information, see there? Flight path, Hawaii, Hawaii, right? This is really important information. And now I do want you to pay attention on this, in this red circle here, this area uh, where the flight is supposed to go right in the middle. So let's watch a, a couple of videos now that will help us understand what's going on. There's a section of abyssal plane, a kind of flat lying section so now here's the whole the whole world ocean and uh, the color scheme is not quantified in here but I can tell you basically what's going on all the deep blue is abyssal plain <coughs> about five kilometers deep and you see it a lot of places an abyssal plain is an underwater plain on the deep ocean floor usually found at depths between 3,000 meters 9,800 feet and 6,000 meters 20,000 feet. Lying generally between the foot of a continental rise and the mid-ocean ridge, 
abyssal plains cover more than 50% of the Earth's surface. They are among the flattest, smoothest and least explored regions on Earth. Abyssal plains were not recognized as distinct physiographic features of the sea floor until the late 1940s and, until very recently, none had been studied on a systematic basis. So according to this website Extreme Science, Abyssal Plain, the vast majority of the real estate at the bottom of the sea is a relatively flat expanse of level floor called the Abyssal Plain. It averages over two miles deep and accounts for as much as 70-90% of the seafloor over the entire planet. So if uh, all this region here between Australia and North America are abyssal plain, just like the Yale professor explained, which means flat land, we, how come we have a, a, a ball here? How come the Earth is a ball if 79% of the ocean floor is flat? We cannot have both. You cannot have a globe over a flat surface, right? So let's look at this in detail now. Right, here we have ocean map of the world. This is a Mercator's projection where it shows, highlights all the uh, oceans. And remember what the professor said, all this region here in blue are, are cell plains, which means are flat. And here, over in, in post this map, I do have Cantus flight plan right here, connecting from North America to Australia. Okay, remember all these dark parts here, darker, are flat land, flat bottom of the ocean, seabed, flat. So over in post, we have here Australia's uh, Cantus flight plan from. Uh, New York towards uh, Sydney. So there's no possibility this flight can take place like this if the Earth is not a globe. And since this region, from this region right here to this is flat, there's no curvature and uh, this flight plan is not possible. And not according to what you see here with Australia being on the bottom and next to South America and North America being on top. It's got to be different the layout of the continents. That's what we're going to see now. But let's look a little bit more over these uh, abyssal plains. All right, guys, here we have Australia, the coast of Australia on this side. We have North America on this side. All this region here, uh, the distance, the, the region on the uh, Pacific Ocean that divides uh, North America to Australia. And we know, according to the professor, Yale professor, and the ocean maps, uh, that all this area here is flat. We have the ocean floor, we have a uh, abyssal plain, abyssal plain from one coast to the other. So if we know this region is flat, the waters must be flat, the ocean surface must be so flat as well. So we have an airplane here flying from Australia to North America. Now airplane in English, it's, it's a compound noun. What's a compound noun? Well, when two nouns are put together to form a new word, for example, air plus plane equals airplane. So an airplane, it's a mechanical device that flies over a flat land. So here's the airplane flying from Australia to North America. He has to fly over a plane because all these region apes or pla planes here are flat. So the, this, the, uh, the globe map when it shows uh, around uh, Earth, it's wrong because we know this region here is flat. If it's flat, the waters above contain must be flat because the water has to adjust. This is the natural this is how the water behaves, as we can see in this video. It is a fact, not a theory, that bodies of water always seek and find their own level. level, level, level. From a pond, lake, or an ocean, the natural physics of water is to find and remain level, level, level. level. 
it is a fact that the majority of Earth is covered in such level water, level water, thus making it an unscientific theory to postulate that Earth is actually a gigantic sphere with bendy oceans curving all the way around it. It is an unproven, unscientific theory with no observable, measurable, or repeatable evidence to claim that bodies of water can somehow bend, cling to the exterior of shapes, and show convexity upon their surface. It is a fact, not a theory, that we are able to observe objects at incredibly long distances, far beyond what would be possible if Earth were a globe 25,000 miles in circumference, as we're told. For example, it is a fact that in Genoa, Italy, from just above sea level, it is possible to see the distant islands of Elba, Caprea, and Corsica, 80 to 125 miles away. It is a necessary theory that the globe Earth must curve 8 inches per mile squared, if it really be a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, as we're told. But based on such a theory, these islands would all be completely hidden behind thousands of feet of curved Earth. This is the distance between the coast of California to Sydney, 7,460 miles. Uh, this is what uh, Wikipedia will give you. I show this curved line here as if this region was curved. But we know this whole region here is flat because of the Abyssal Oceans. So I wonder what do some pilots say who defend the globe Earth. Let's draw a line here. So let's move this line here. So we know the uh, apes are flat, the plains are flat between Australia and North America, right? So the waters must be flat. Now to have a globe, let's say that we heard the professor saying this is like uh, five kilometers, about three miles, three miles from here to here. So how how is this even possible to have curvature with this amount of water? What's holding this water here from spilling out towards land? What forces are containing? We know this is not how water behaves. It has to be flat. If the bottom is flat, the top the, uh, here must be flat as well. What's making this bulge over here? This is against all uh, physics of the water and, and the science. Why would no container containing this hill of water here on top? No wonder this guy here has a question mark and this one also, because it's not possible, my friends. If North America, if the uh, ocean floor between North America and Australia is, is flat, the top of the water must be flat as well, uh, because water is always flat. So what's causing this bulge of water here? When they show you a globe Earth, they're not really showing you how the physical properties of water behave. They are just showing uh, uh, a drawing. This is how it must be, because water must, uh, it's always flat. So Australia, North America, and the top must be flat as well. If the bottom is flat, the, bottom, the top must be flat as well. Because water always finds its level. And if it finds its level, it must be flat. Here we have, even the ocean must always find its level, right? This is North America, this is Australia, we have the abyss of flat in between. So it, this idea that the ocean somehow will curve, this cannot happen uh, in real life, only in fantasy land, only in, in the globe earth mind. So this is this is impossible. This bulge of water on top, this hill of water separating the two continents is impossible. There's a section of abyssal plain, a kind of flat lying section. So now here's the whole the whole world ocean and uh, the color scheme is not quantified in here, but I can tell you basically what's going on. All the deep blue is abyssal plain, <coughs> about five kilometers deep. And you see it a lot of places. Okay, guys, here is looking at the flat earth map from the above. So this is the flight from New York. I'm working with two possibilities. The, it could have flown straight ahead, yes, over Alaska towards Sydney or 
these flights could have taken some advantage of some sort of wind that goes around here and flown this route right here towards Sydney. Either way, this flight flew north of Hawaii. Hawaii stands right here. Uh, just as at least Kent has released a truthful flight plan showing the flights going north of Hawaii. So, and since the Earth is flat, there, uh, the, there are no, there's no curvature, nowhere to be found. Ocean's floor is flat. There is only one way this flight could have taken place. Going from New York to Sydney, it's either through this blue line over Alaska or the red one over the northwest coast of the US, probably taking advantage of some uh, jet stream, then towards Sydney. This is how this flight flew, uh, Cantus 7879, the Dreamliner, from New York to Sydney, either straight line, the blue line over Alaska, or the red arrow here, taking advantage of some uh, jet streams that go around this region right here. There, a re there was a flight coming from... We had a screaming jet stream that was over the Atlantic and it was really speeding up planes with an impressive tailwind. So with a 260 mile per hour westerly in the jet stream, you had a tailwind that was pushing the airplane at a ground speed. And this is a record, as I understand it, of 865 miles per hour People in the plane wouldn't have known any different, but from New York to London, that particular KLM flight only took four hours and 56 minutes. And this flight probably took advantage of this fly, the winds uh, over the north parts of the US, towards the northwest, and then from here, it flew to Sydney. Here we see now Ibsal planes cover 79% of the ocean surface. 71% of Earth's surface is covered by water. So since the Ibsal planes are basically flat land under the oceans, and the oceans cover 71% of Earth, so it's pretty much playing everywhere. And this is this sign here saying Ibsal planes, Ibsal planes, Ibsal planes, and right here, it's just like the professor from Yale University was explaining all these regions on Earth are flat. An abyssal plane is an underwater plane on the deep ocean floor. Abyssal planes cover more than 50% of the Earth's surface. They are among the flattest, smoothest and least explored regions on Earth. So how if 70-80% of uh, Earth's surface is flat, uh, we don't live on a globe at all. There's no way. You cannot make a globe out of flat land. And this is how the flight from New York to Sydney happened. Right here, this route right here. Okay, they flew over the Apes Plains and the aircraft probably followed just like the flight plan along the northwest of the United States and then from there headed to Sydney. One straight flight, almost 20 hours, and this is how it took place. We see the Earth being flat, spread out with the Apes Plains all around, proving that the ocean floor is flat. So, therefore, if the ocean floors are flat and we have a lot of flat land over uh, the continent means that the earth is flat there's no curvature nowhere to be found we cannot have a globe without curvature and if the earth is flat there is no globe so airplanes do not fly over a globe airplanes fly over a flat earth right so let's look one more time new york fly to Sydney over a flat earth. This is how uh, the Dreamliner 7879 flew from New York to Sydney in almost 20 hours. And this is the flight route right here. This is what is really taking place. Uh, again, one more time, I have to stress this. Remember, Abyssal abs planes, flat land under the oceans. An abyssal plane is an underwater plane on the deep ocean floor. Abyssal planes cover more than 50% of the Earth's surface. They are among the flattest, smoothest and least explored regions on Earth. And Abyssal planes cover 79% of the ocean surface, which means we have flat land, flat Earth, flat ocean floor, 
in 79% of the Earth, which means we cannot have a globe Earth uh, 25,000 miles in circumference when we find 70% of the ocean's uh, seabed being flat. There is no way. How would you like to hear from some pilots in Australia or North America what their explanation? You can show like a CGI ball on a computer screen, but that's not the reality. The reality is that 79% of the ocean surface is flat. They, they are called abyssal planes. And 71% of their surface is covered by water, and water always finds its level, water is always flat. So the result of this too means a flat Earth. Uh, we don't live on a globe, the Earth is flat. The globe Earth rests only on theories, but the flat Earth rests on facts. So I ask, how many areas of flat land does it take to create a ball Earth? We have huge areas. We have the abyssal plains, all this area covering darker blue, all flat land under the sea. From the Andes to the Guianas, Venezuela is the land of the Tepuis and of exotic beaches. But inland there is another treasure of nature, still largely undiscovered. The basin of the Orinoco, lying between the Andes to the west, the coastal mountain range to the north, and the Guiana Massif to the southeast. It is so completely flat that it has been named the region of the plains. The Amazon from Peru to Brazil. Um, did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It, it's just all flat. Um, did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It, it's just all flat. Um, did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It, it's just all flat. Um, did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It, it's just all flat. And the South Flats in Bolivia. The Bolivian Salt Flats. It just keeps getting prettier. <laughs> oh, this is so crazy! I just want to go walk on it forever and ever. We just drove 70 miles into the middle of the salt flats to this island. Once we got like 50 kilometers out, you could start to see it and it felt like we were going to be there any minute the entire time. The depth perception here, because it's so flat, is so messed up. How much flat earth is necessary to create the ball? Everywhere we go, and, in, and not mentioning all the places that we drive, signs we see like this one, uh, sea level. I myself, when you drive from San Diego towards Calexico, Southern California, 80 miles into uh, going towards the east, you're going to see uh, several um, signs like this showing sea level. And uh, everywhere you go, in Brazil, in the middle of the US, Europe, Africa, or Asia, you always will find places like this, sea level. So how many more proof do you need to believe that there is no curvature on this earth, that the earth is flat? So some pilot of the internet tells you the earth is a ball because somehow he shows on the computer screen of his 
tablets, a ball that's as perfect as a bowling ball, uh, contradicting what science says. Well, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. Is the fact that the Earth is squashed. The Earth is actually a little bit shorter in the pole-to-pole -pole direction than it is if you took the diameter across the equator. It's squashed in this direction. This actually gives us what's called a semi-major and a semi-minor axis. But the Earth isn't spherical. It's spinning, so bits closer to the equator are thrown out by centrifugal effects and the poles get squashed in a bit. In fact, the Earth is so non-spherical that it's 42 kilometers farther across at the equator than from pole to pole. So we could model the Earth as a flattened and stretched spinning sphere and then calculate what height the oceans would settle to when pulled by gravity onto the surface of that ellipsoid. If you believe in the globe because some pilot of the internet showed you a uh, ball of, uh, on the screen of a computer, you know how easily those machines are manipulated. Everything man touches gets to be manipulated. Have you ever heard of voting machines? No. How would that happen? It is not letting me vote for who I want to vote for. No. It is not letting me vote for who I want to vote for. You may ask me, why can't us fly 7879 from New York to Sydney prove it flat Earth? Well, all flights over the ocean prove flat Earth. All of them, from South America to Af South Africa, from South Africa to Australia, from Australia to South America, from North America to Australia, from North America to Europe to Africa, from South America to Europe, all flights over the ocean prove the Earth is flat because water is always level and the bottom of the ocean is also flat. That's why we call the Absal Plain, because it's flat. So all flights over the water, all over the waters prove the Earth is flat, all of them. No difference with Cantus Flight 7879, New York to Sydney. This flight specifically only shows the size of the deception. They keep on deceiving people by showing fake flight plans over places that cannot be flown because the earth is not a ball. So all flights going over the oceans fly over flat waters and the flat bottom of the ocean. There's no question. Open your eyes. It's time for you to question those pilots who claim that the earth is a ball, they are flying over a ball, showing you softwares that can be easily manipulated. Uh, how the data that they demonstrate can be made from simulations, from simulators. You know, flights, there are many flight simulators that can generate data and to be printed, to be posted, to be uploaded as if those were truly flights. But they are not, they are only simulations and they produce those and they show to people as if uh, they were flying over a ball but there is no ball, there is no um, sphere. Earth is flat, apes are plains, and all over plain flat places on Earth prove that. Thank you guys, see you next time. Have a good day, God bless you. Bye-bye. Uh, Flat Earth Banjo, USA, Japan, and Brazil. He did a fantastic uh, video, um, you know, basically exposing the lies of the globe, showing how they're taking these uh, fly paths uh, the, these direct routes that definitely prove the flat earth and thanks, thanks so much. I yeah. shared that video, um, that you made a few years back, might've been three years, two or three years. I forgot exactly when, but fantastic work. When you think airplanes are flying over ball earth and then scare in the air for passengers on board an American airlines flight, the pilot warning everyone on board that they would be landing. You realize that an emergency landing. But first this morning, a Qantas A380 carrying about 400 passengers had to make an emergency landing at Perth Airport earlier this morning.
makes more sense on the Gleason's flat earth map. It's in this moment that you realize a second emergency landing in less than two weeks that the earth is not a spinning ball. Last night here we reported on that emergency landing here at News. Here is a live look at the San Francisco airport where a flight from Hawaii was forced to land because of a medical emergency involving a flight attendant. Bogota to Frankfurt emergency land in Manchester only makes sense on a flat earth map. Hong Kong to Los Angeles emergency landing in Alaska only makes sense on the flat earth map. Chicago to Doha emergency landing in Moscow only makes sense on the flat earth map. Paris to Shanghai, emergency land in Siberia, only makes sense on the flat earth map. Flight routes and emergency landings, the physical properties of water, the compass, gyroscope, radars and lighthouses, the lack of curvature, all point to one simple truth that the earth is 